what was the purpose of, re, you know, writing this book? You said, you know, you kind of need to know my background to know why I wrote this book. Now that we know your background, what was your inspiration to want to write that book? Uh, basically, because I looked through the history of contagion. And if you would permit me, I'd love to share what I found out with your listeners. Please. Uh, so, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about that the, the normal observation that, you know, a certain person gets sick in a certain way, let's say a cold or a flu or that, and then somebody else in their vicinity or their family or whatever gets sick in the same way. And one says something was passed between the first person and another person. And this is a very normal, clear observation. We've all had it. And in fact, interestingly, you know, it was first described at least 2,000 years ago by the ancient Greeks. They said there's something that's passed between people. We don't know what it is. You know, they thought the spirits or who knows what. Uh, they couldn't see anything. And, and then they thought there must be something contagious. And we go then for about 1,800 years without being able to find the agent. Now, I would point out that this sort of Western science, Western medicine, is not the only stream of thought going on in those 2,000 years, right? There's Chinese medicine, there's probably traditional Iranian medicine, there's Native American medicine, there's Ayurvedic medicine. These are very old, successful medical systems. And what you find is none of them thought diseases were contagious. None of them. There is no concept in Chinese medicine that something unseen passes from one person to another. And in no other system did that exist. Now, of course, that doesn't mean it's true. You know, they could have all been wrong. But when I looked into it, I thought that was sort of interesting. So then we get to around the 1800s, and now we're really talking about 1850. And there was what I call the first Eureka moment. Right, so we're thinking one person is sick, another person gets sick, there must be something spread. And that observation is what's called epidemiological observation. Now, I just wanna point out something here that this contagion theory was applied to, to the following disease. There was a bunch of sailors who got sick and one sailor after another got sick and they, their teeth fell out and then they went into heart failure and died. And this happened in the thousands and thousands of people. And it was usually one ship after another. And for a hundred years, they said, this must be contagious. And then somebody ate a lime and the whole thing went away because it turns out it was scurvy. And the reason I point that out is epidemiological observations like this person got sick and then somebody else got sick, is well accepted in medicine. That is not how we prove causation. And you hear this now all the time. Well, a lot of people in one place got sick, so it must be a virus. Well, a lot, you know, they blew a bomb off in Hiroshima. A lot of people got sick and nobody thinks that was a virus. Or they'll say, uh, if it spreads from one place to another, that proves it's a virus. So I'm sure you remember Chernobyl. There was a nuclear accident. A lot of people died. It started spreading into Eastern Europe and then Western Europe. A lot of people got sick. And as far as I can tell, that's no evidence that that was a virus. In other words, the, the, the idea that a lot of people in Iran or Turkey or Spain or the nursing home or the cruise ship or the whatever got sick. You know, my Aunt Bessie went to a party. Those are epidemiological observations, the purpose of which is to generate theories which can be tested for causation, period. And I would agree 100% that we had enough evidence with contagion that we should investigate for an infectious cause or an unseen agent. Now, that's what Louis Pasteur famously did. He said, uh, there's all these people, and in, in fact, what he used was the case of sheep and said, there's all these sheep getting sick, one sheep after another. Sometimes the people who were handling the sheep got sick. So there must be something uh, that's passed. They then had an, invented the microscope. 
So the first eureka moment in history then is they could see this bacteria under the microscope. And they saw the bacteria in the sheep and they saw it in the, in the next sheep who got sick. End of story, that's what caused the sheep to get sick called anthrax. Um, and, but here's what happened then. Uh, Pasteur isolated the anthrax bacteria from the sheep, right? So he mm -hmm. took them out yeah. and he gave them to other sheep and none of them got sick. None of the people got sick. Now, here's the way I think people should understand this. Imagine you have a cow and you don't feed the cow proper food, which is grass, right? You feed it cardboard and dead cow parts and, you know, and you soak it in glyphosate and tick poisons, et cetera. All that stuff comes out in the milk. Now, then somebody drinks the milk and gets sick. Mm. That's contagion, right? And then you look in the milk and you see a bacteria called listeria. And you say, okay, that may be the causative agent. And then you look in the stool of the person and they also have listeria. End of story. And so the listeria, you drank listeria, it made you sick. Now, unfortunately though, or maybe fortunately, there's another explanation for that, which is the cow was sick, the milk, the poisons went into the milk. The role of bacteria in nature is to biodegrade poisons, right? If you have a compost pile and you put dead squirrels in it, you'll get bacteria to eat the squirrels. If you have a pond and you put poisons in it, you get algae growth that eat the poisons. If you have a forest and you cut the trees down, the algae and, and the fungus and the bacteria eat the dead trees. That's called biology. That's called bioremediation. So how do you know that the listeria isn't there to, to digest the poisons in the milk? So we have two very clear explanations for what may have happened, right? It's either the bacteria or it's the poison and the bacteria are not causing anything. They're just helping you out by eating the poisons as they do in nature. Now, what I tell people is this is what Pasteur and his colleagues did for 40 years because there is a very simple way to sort this out. All you have to do is isolate the listeria from the milk right? You can't give them all the milk because then you don't know if the poison's in it. Isolate the listeria, give that to a bunch of animals, see what happens. That's what they did for 40 years. And as far as I can tell from the medical literature, no animal or person gets sick. 